Once you've mastered navigating through the job board, let's take a look at a repair order for repair order navigation. So we're gonna take a look at repair order 195 for Frank Stan's 2011 Honda Element. To jump into the repair order, just click within the tile anywhere. Now we're in the repair order. So in the upper left-hand corner, we do have repair order 195, Frank's name, his vehicle, and you have a small icon of a key tag to associate keys with cars. And notice that I have my left sidebar collapsed using the hamburger icon to have more room to work within the repair order. Next, if we pan further towards the right, you do have an odometer reading in and out. And directly underneath that, you have four icons. And from left to right, the first one is a profitability analyst button. You may want to check profits before sending an estimate out to get approved. You can then text your customer directly through Techmetric. You have a share button where you can share the estimate, the inspection, or the invoice via email or text message. You also have a print button where you can print out the estimate. The repair order is a worksheet for the technician and the invoice, the inspections with images or without. If we pan further towards the right, notice we have five tabs within the repair order. These are the five phases of a repair order. So if you're a technician, you may not have the estimate tab or the payment tab by default. These can be turned on in the permission section of the employee's card. So next, let's take a look at the summary tab. Within the summary tab, you have something called lifetime stats. This will tell you how many times your customer has been here and how much money they've spent with you. They'll tell you the first time they showed up and the last time they showed up. This will start calculating once you start posting tickets in Techmetric. Beneath that, we have the activity feed, which is an audit log for the repair order. It'll track the user and the action the user is doing. You guys can add activities. If the customer for some reason left their wallet in the car, you can track it here. Underneath that, we have appointments. We can create a follow-up appointment for this repair order. If we need to recheck refrigerant levels or oil levels, we'll have them come back. Beneath that, we have job history. Here, we have broken it out per job since we're at the repair order level. So if I wanted to see, did we put a coil on this car? I'm just gonna type it on in. As long as coil is in the title of the job that we built previous visits, you'll be able to search for it quickly. Here, the technician can always print out or look at the PDF to see what we did last time. Over to the right, you can hit the three dots and advisors, you can navigate back to repair order 194, or you can add this past approved job to your new repair order. Underneath that, you have purchase orders. This is gonna have all the purchase orders that we've made for this particular repair order. And then all the way at the bottom, if you made a mistake and you wanna delete the repair order and you have the permissions to, you can do so here at the bottom of the summary tab. The next tab is the inspection tab or the inspection phase. This is where the technician would physically diagnose the car. Here we have customer concerns. Your technician can type up findings like what's causing that check engine light. And beneath that, they can do a digital vehicle inspection, identifying good components and bad components. They can take pictures and send this to your customer for good visual aid on getting them to approve any estimates that you might be presenting. The next phase is the estimate phase. This is where you would build your repair order, adding jobs, parts, labor, anything that we would need to successfully fix this car. Here, this is a dialogue box. It does have your customer's concerns and the technician notes, and these are jobs that can be built and presented to the customer. The next phase is the work in progress tab. This will be here once we have approvals. This is where the technician physically performs these labor operations and, and labor repairs. So here we have a status. Your technicians can update this, that they're in progress, we need to order more parts or we're waiting on parts, completely up to you or your advisor or your technicians. Here, we have one job complete. Technician has finished it, so it marked it out we also have the jobs that need to be done and you have a timeline down at the bottom. Here we have finished 1.5 or 4.5, so we're 35% complete. Technicians by default do not have this timeline here. This is whoever has access to complete the repair work. 
Once you complete it, it pushes the repair order into the completed column to where then we can jump into the last phase, which is the payment tab. Here, we need to collect $1,013 from our customer. We can take cash, we can run credit cards, take checks, or you can use other for write-offs, discounts, or anything if we have to give this job away for some reason or they're bartering with us, it's completely up to you. Once you take payment and you post this ticket, then it will disappear from your job board and it would go into your paid tickets. Through all this process of these five phases, you do have your sidebar to the right. This collapses vertically and horizontally. This houses information about your repair order. And let's collapse them all here. So you have a way to edit the repair order. Technicians by default cannot edit this section. Here we are the advisor. You can dispatch the ticket. This is how you correctly dispatch it. If you put a technician here, it will populate all jobs to this particular technician. At your labor rate, we want to. Uh, we don't need to save parts, and uh, it's a returning customer. Beneath that, you have vehicle information. Here, this will give you a Carfax report. If Carfax is turned on in your integration section, you've got a uh, vehicle description, the VIN number, the license plate. You have a spot for the production date, a unit number, and you have special notes about the vehicle. This particular one has been on fire, so you know, we want to be careful. Don't do any wiring repairs on it. Beneath that, you have your customer info section. This will give you your customer type, if they're a business or a person, their name, phone number, special notes, like how to pronounce their name, where they live. Maybe you got a bad customer, you don't want to do business with them anymore, you can put those notes here. Beneath that, you also have fluids, and this will collect information as long as you have a VIN number in the ticket. Once it knows what to look for, it'll pull it up. So here we have Oil takes 5W20, it takes 4.2 quarts. Beneath that, you've got PAG oil levels, refrigerant levels, coolant levels. And this is a quick way to reference how much oil this takes. So if you're an advisor building or you're a technician, put it back in the vehicle. Beneath that, you have filters and blades. This will give you OEM numbers for common parts like air filters, rear wipers, cabin air filters, there is a variety of aftermarket parts as well, from Mighty, Pennzoil, Pronto, Valvoline. If your part isn't here, I would cross-reference the OEM part number on any part that you may be trying to fit to this vehicle. Uh, you also have fuel filters. This is a great way to figure out if cars have DSG transmission, serviceable fuel filters, and it's all here under your filters and blades. Beneath that, you have specs. This will help you route the drive belt back on or the serpentine belt. This will give you descriptions on the torque specs on the lug nuts and foot pounds and newton meters. You have original tire sizes, original tire pressures, and you have instructions on how to reset the service light, the manual way. And the very bottom accordion folder is technical service bulletins. Uh, these are searchable. So if you have a, a fault, you can search for it up top and these are straight from the manufacturer, pushed to the motor labor guide, and then pushed to us. So if a new bulletin comes out, it will take a few weeks to get here, but it should be present. And we can quickly diagnose cars and problem areas with the manufacturer's TSPs. So that's your sidebar within your repair order. Thank you so much. You guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and to share it with the rest of your team. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you would like to see more helpful videos for auto repair shops. Have a wonderful day.